There we go, boys. What's that way? 20? 20. 20 pounds. Nice. Ready to go or a couple more logs? We gotta build up a little bit of a bed coal. Coal bed? Bed coal. Jeez, I'm hungry. Gotta get some food. It's not even hot. That's crazy how it's not. Nothing. Well, I'm here with Kevin. He's admiring his work. I'm gonna admire my work in a second here. Caught a big, a big bum salmon, big one. Um, I caught that with Scott yesterday. So I'll show you that later, talk about it a little bit later, but uh, you got the rock 
Ooh, that's a lot of heat coming out the front there. We're going to throw the door on in a second, but we want to build up a bed of coals. So this is the, the first run. Kevin's actually going to cook a pizza. He's been building this for the last week or so. You can go over to Modern Self Reliance and check out the build. I'm not sure if it'll be up by the time this video is up, but it'll be up eventually, as are all the projects you're going to see around here. In a second, we're going to go check out the ducks. That's big news. Kevin got some pet ducks. <laughs> so there's a story behind that too. We're not going to eat the ducks today. Uh, perhaps ever. We'll see. It's always, uh, it's one of those things. Like, what do you do in the middle of the winter with a couple of ducks? Introduce you to, do they have names? Waddles and Puddles. It's Puddles. Waddles and Puddles. <laughs> this might be Waddles, this might be Puddles. Say hello, Waddles or Puddles. Do they swim? Yes. <laughs> Let me see them swim. Look, but they want, they want to be together. They don't like being apart. See, here you go, buddy. Here. Want some food? They like food. They're always, they're always hungry, look at it. They're eating just whatever. Yeah, mm, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Ducks don't have teeth. Ducks don't have teeth. Kevin digs a pond, gets some ducks. I don't know what else is going to come out here. We're hoping some wild ducks come out here, maybe some wood ducks. They're pretty small. Um, yeah, you'll have to watch the video to figure out what's going to what's going to be the future of the pond. Hopefully, we'll get some fish in it someday. All right, so those are the ducks. I thought I'd introduce you to the ducks. Orpington. Orpington is the is the breed of the duck. Orpington duck. So, so they're going to be brown, I think, by the end of it. They're not going to be uh, well. They're going to lose their feathers, and then I don't know what we're going to do after that. If they're going to try to fly away or not. So they don't want to be alone. They're coming to get us. So we're starting to build up a little bit of a bed of coals there, but uh, we need, because of the size of the fish, I need to be able to move the coals to the left side and to the right side in order to be able to fit that fish in between. It's on the small side for a uh, rock oven, but I think the idea is to be able to cook, you know, kind of anything in there. So I'm gonna try a fish. You know, last time I came out here, I did a, a board cooked fish and you know, that style of cooking really is only bottom to top. So your food has to be over top of it then it doesn't do well. So the idea here is to be able to put it all the way inside the oven and then heat it all the way around. And this is primitive technology. It's been going back thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, even when people got tired of just like having to tend to their meal over the fire, they can envelope the entire meal with heat. And we've done all kinds of cooking, but not as advanced as this on the primitive technology realm or spectrum of things to, of things a way to cook. So we've done earth ovens. That's kind of the same principle. You heat up the ground, you put it down in, in there, and then you bury it and that envelopes with heat as well. But this is like um, an advancement on that. It's funny, these ducks are so imprinted on Kevin. They, uh, Kevin went down to the outhouse. <laughs> the ducks are starting to follow him. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's what happens when you get the animals, especially ducks, like any kind of birds, like chickens, um, geese. Well, they did experiments on imprinting a long time ago. And they obviously found that geese were the same thing. So that they were so, so they would so follow a person that they wouldn't actually fly. So they'd have to get those planes and fly them out to just to teach the geese how to fly. All right, I'm getting too hungry to wait. So I'm just gonna spread everything out and make way for my fish. I can't wait any longer. I should wait longer, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to wait any longer. So what I'm hoping to do is spread this stuff out. It's freaking hot in there. I can't stick my hand in there. Oh, like we need some better tools for this, dude. Maybe use a stick. All right, All right. Thanks. Stick. All right. I'll do that. Oh, that's why they have the big pizza oven thing. <laughs> <laughs> that works so much better. So I want to get rid of all the coal so like that it. there's nothing underneath the fish when I put it in there. Cause I'm afraid it's gonna catch on fire, but we're not gonna cook this fish for very long. I'm gonna throw that all the way to the back there. Close it up, we got lots of nice smoke, which is what we want. I'm gonna smoke it a little bit here. Hopefully this door doesn't catch on fire. Kevin's design. And we're just gonna let science do its work. We're gonna call it science. Primitive science. <laughs> it's not primitive science, it's just science. So now that this fish is cooking, we got about 20 minutes. I'm gonna take you guys over the adventure that led to this fish. I met up with Scott down in Southern Ontario and we hit the salmon run. I'm gonna come back here, we're gonna eat some fish. What can go wrong? Nothing. Cause we already know we got a fish. So just 
stick around for the adventure. Let's go. All right, you guys. Well, we're here. We're at the fishing spot. Scott's actually down there. I had to run back up, grab a few things. I'm going to meet him down there. And what we're going to do is try to catch some salmon. They're doing the annual run up the river right now. And uh, we're going to see what we can manage to do. We're going to tie some spawn sacks on. And hopefully we catch the first little bit of the run. You know, I'm the type of guy who doesn't like to fish around crowds. Avoid the crowds at all costs. So we're here super, super early. It's uh, mid-August. The salmon are just starting to run. Hopefully, we'll see what we get into. But uh, we're going to tie some spawn sacks on. And uh, Scott's basically the one running the show here. I'm just tag along. But uh, we're going to jump this fence, get down there, switch to the GoPro, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, we manage to catch something that we can cook and eat. They're stupid, eh? Yeah. You probably hit them with a rod. We're going to be doing some pretty basic salmon fishing. Guys, they've never done this before. I haven't done much of it, so I'm pretty much a rookie here. I'm going to be using the spin cast rod and reel combo, and Scott's going to be using the float reel. So the basic idea, we're going to tie up some spawn sacks, let them drift down right in front of the fish, and hopefully they're going to grab it. Just the beginning of the salmon run, and they're going to be coming up fresh, which means anything we catch, we should be able to keep. Later on in the season, they're going to be pretty rough going, pretty beat up. Uh, the meat's not going to be super edible. I mean, you can eat almost any kind of meat. You just don't want to eat that kind of beat up salmon mush mess. So we're going to get the fresh ones, target those, and they're going to be best for eating anyway. There we go. No worries. No. Oh, Scott's hooked up on a fresh fish and it's going down. So we got to catch up to it. I try my best to See if we can't hang on to the tail this time. I missed it a couple times. <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna try to wrangle this guy in. It's a big salmon and he's going down. And Scott's on the other side, <laughs> so he's in pretty rough shape now. We don't catch up and help him. He's gonna lose the fish. She's going down. I would have had to throw him back regardless. He was snagged in the floor. I think in the side or in the fin. But the cool thing about that fish was he actually had one of those lamprey eels stuck onto the side of him. You could see it every time he came up. The, you could see the tail of the fish go one way and the tail of the lamprey go the other way. So probably dragged us down 100 yards and the hook finally popped out. Which is good that it popped out and I didn't have to bite him all the way down to the back to the beginning of the river. But well, I'll tap another spawn bag and Go at it again, see if we can get another one. It's not uncommon to have a foul fished, foul hooked fish. There's just so many of them in here right now. You drag a hook through it. Every once in a while it happens. The important part is just to make sure you let them go because it's not, uh, not legal to keep them. It's not sporting, it's not ethical. And we want to make sure that we follow all the rules here. Only keep fish that are hooked in the mouth and only try to hook fish in the mouth. All right, so what's the strat, Scott? Before we get uh, split up maybe on the river here, targeting some fish what are we gonna do what are you gonna try to do here so I'm gonna tie up some spawn bags so just gonna throw some eggs into the sack and then from there you're just gonna fold it up make a little pouch with the eggs in it then you're gonna twist the bag a couple turns and you take your magic thread you're gonna wrap the magic thread around it or five six times then snap that thread off because it's just a stretchy thread and then from there you snip the top of, it, of all the excess material off and you're ready to fish thread it onto your hook and you're ready to go basically the fish are coming up and they're eating uh eggs that are drifting down from a uh, pre-spawned fish previously right? spawned previously fish. spawned fish yeah and once they're done spawning that's pretty much it so you we can catch some rainbow here yep um definitely salmon and the rainbow basically follow up and they're just eating the salmon eggs. Uh, yeah. A lot of the rainbows that will be in here are from, are, normally the rainbow runs in the very beginning of the year, in the spring. So a lot of the rainbows will actually be hatchlings from the beginning of this year. Okay. And they'll only be six, seven inches long. Right. Um, you can catch some bigger ones. So they'll just be normal rainbow trout. They won't even be steelhead that have came up from the lake. So. Right. So mostly salmon today, I guess. Yeah. Then okay but we have a chance for uh king salmon uh atlantic salmon brown trout rainbow trout all the kinds of fish that i like to eat so let's see what this river is going to give us it's 
spawn sacks. Spawn bags. Spawn bags. You don't like me calling them sacks? <laughs> don't really matter. Yeah, right? If you can't catch another one. Scott! We're on, boys! <laughs> All right. He's got a kneel on him. <laughs> You're not going to touch it because it's got a kneel? <laughs> I'll grab it and kneel it, Joe. <laughs> I got to get him. I got to do this myself. <laughs> Not quite. Oh. They want to touch my fish, it's got a needle on it. He won't touch it. <laughs> He's scared. I hate the I don't know. I'm just weak. I think they're all fresh. What do we do, Scotty? Keep going? Good? Huh? All right. Okay. Oh, the lamprey's still on there. Right. <laughs> He's not going to get you. I want to see this. Hang on tight. I'm trying to keep it in the water so I can get him out. <laughs> <and kill. laughs> nice. So normally when as soon as you get them out of the water they let go this one's for some reason not look at that ugly thing you eat those things no <laughs> <laughs> now pop him off and then cut his head off you're supposed to kill him instant oh yeah that thing is so gross oh, i don't think it's going anywhere after that <laughs> <laughs> thanks man no problem. <laughs> there we go that was a good fight I actually spotted it coming all the way up, followed it all the way through the channels and actually caught it up there. It actually went through my legs, so that was fun. Fresh meal, can't ask for anything better than that. The salmon are coming up fresh now. You can see that thing's not spawned out. They're just coming up right from the lake all the way up. So they're good eating. This one actually had a lamprey on it. I think it's a sea lamprey. It's a parasite that attaches to the side of the fish. We cut it off, it's just supposed to do, dispose of them. Because it gets back in the system and harms the fish and they don't belong here. They're they're simply not uh, part of the natural fauna, flora of this business. They get rid of them. Not flora, fauna. Fauna? Yeah, invasive. That's what I mean to say. So let's get hooked back up. Well, let's get a line back up and let's get hooked back up so we can't catch another one. Here we go, boys. What's that way? 20? 20. 20 pounds. Nice. We managed to get uh, two. Three, actually. Three. Yeah. Oh, I can't even pick them up. They're so freaking heavy. And there's two in the car, or one in the car, sorry. One in the car already we froze from earlier. So that was a productive day. So I think by now that meal's probably cooked up. So let's jump back in and take a taste. Cause I'm hungry and the future me's hungry. The, f the present me's hungry too, but the present me has to wait for the future me. Got some good smoke going on there now. I did raise it up a little bit because I found there's a little bit more heat at the top and probably should have built up a little bit of more coal 
but uh, it's smoking nicely and it's cooking really good. It's just gonna be a little bit, just a little bit longer before we can pull it out. All right, I think it's ready to go. Well, not quite, but I'm gonna put maple syrup on it. I need some maple syrup so I can start thinking about the words that come out of my face. That looks pretty good. Got it on the cedar plank again. We're gonna drizzle some. I don't like putting it on necessarily because I know it's just gonna drip off mostly, which I don't like. But some of it will caramelize, which is the idea. Cause it doesn't really, you know, if you just put it on at the end, it just kind of sits on top. We've just been adding a couple of logs here and there just to get the flame going again, get that heat up. But it's hot, hot, hot up here. And then right about there is probably the level where it's not super, super hot anymore. But this would be good if this was like cooked for like just hours at this temperature, it would be some of the best fish in the world. I just let it die out and cook overnight. Freaking love it. If you haven't noticed, this channel has been changing a little bit and I've been taking part on different adventures. It's not just survival and it's not just way off from the wilderness. If there's an opportunity presented to me and I get to go along, that's awesome. And Scott called me up, said, hey, you wanna go for a fish? And I said, sure, why not? Where do you wanna go? He's like, I wanna go do the salmon run. And uh, you know, the salmon run up areas where people made established cities. So, hey, sometimes it's, it can't always be way off in the wild, way off in the wilderness. And I'm fortunate to be able to come back to the cabin to cook it, which is awesome. That's a nice coffee from McDonald's. They really like that. <laughs> it's just water. But yeah, reduce, reuse, recycle. These are great little cups. You should save them every time you every time you get a coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh that one's not hot. It's the inside one that's hot. Alright, let's pull this out. Oh boy, oh, in the syrups, caramelized on the outside too. That looks freaking smoking. That's so good. It's not actually as smoky as I thought. I thought it would be smokier than that. It's not smoky, surprisingly. Um, Cause I don't even know what kind of wood we put in there, maple and just whatever our hardwood we had. From a guy who doesn't like fish. From a guy. I'm just afraid of bones. Actually, that one's that one's a good piece there. I'm telling you the end pieces, they're the best pieces. But actually, it's got it's got a consistency like a, it's crunchy and and not mushy like mashed potatoes. I like got that, that's it's got to have consistency. I think, I think because when it doesn't have the consistency, it's just like eating like pate or something. Big thanks to Andrew Jennings. Uh, he made this custom fillet knife for me, Hooligans Forge. I'll put the. Uh, link down in the description below if you guys want to pick up a custom made knife obviously it worked really good on filleting those fish super super sharp and I'll be carrying it with me next time I go on a fishing adventure because I needed a good fillet knife and this one did the trick thanks buddy and uh, yeah check out the description well there you go Kevin actually doesn't like fish he says he likes fish but he'll never go out of his way to actually order fish or make fish he doesn't catch fish he's not a fisherman so that means something that means that the fish was actually good fish when you can convince somebody who doesn't normally like it it's good it's good catch you in the next one